Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to Fridays with Tab and Chance. I am Tabitha Brown. This is my husband. I'm Chance. What's up? Your hair smells good. It's that Donald recipe, the sweet potato pie. Stay focused. Bring the beat in. You was delayed, babe. You, it's, babe, it's supposed to be. That was like, I gave you a good transition right there. I was like, stay focused. Hey, hey, Bring hey. the beat in. This, my, go, this mm. is my lane. My lane. But I've you, been doing this. I got this. You must this. have switched lanes because you were off beat. Uh, 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 uh. I got this. Is it construction? All right. Do it again. Do it again. And go into it. You go with me. Babe, but you got to be... You got to be ready, on your mark, get set, bring the beat in, babe. Can't, you, you. Y'all see what I have to deal with? This one right here, he had the little solo the other week. This now, and, he, and he everybody the, loved it. Now too. he got the big head. Got my moment. You well, ready? Go ahead. Are you go ahead. ready? Then you do it. Go nope, ahead. No, nope. are you ready? Are you ready? Been All right, here we go. One, two, no, three. No, but I have to say bring the beat in. <laughs> That's me Eat crying. the cake, anime. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Come on, babe. Break. I'm waiting on you. Okay. Bring the beat in. Fridays, Fridays, Fridays with Tab and Chance. But on phone, phone, Fridays, Fridays, Fridays with Tab and Chance. I'm giving it to you, babe. Mm -mm, I don't want it. You, I don't want it. You're going to be bitter. No, you, 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 babe. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Hey. Mm -mm. Let's go. What are we talking about today? Rub your ear a little bit. Mm -mm. They ain't doing nothing. Give you a little. What, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so today we are talking about manifesting. We're talking about dreaming. We're talking about visions. Um, writing it down and making it plain. That's what we're talking about as we have an Emmy weekend ahead of us. Mm. Tell going to the Emmys. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Chance. I'm gonna let him go with me. <laughs> but babe, so I, what I want to talk about is we, we were having this conversation the other day. Over the years I've made vision boards, <clears throat> I've had dreams and told you, they I dreamt this, this I, this is gonna happen. But one thing that's always been consistent on my vision boards, and hopefully we can insert in here old pictures that I can find on my social media. I got to see if I can get them to my MySpace and things, <laughs> or at least my face, my old Facebook, uh, that show my vision board pictures. I always had on there what? What do you mean? Like, like I always had like Emmys, Oscars. Oh, yeah. I'd always, always have like, I want to be on the Ellen Show, like all these different things that have all come to pass. Yeah. You've had quite a few things that we have seen come to pass on those boards. Yeah. So, but not just with the boards. Let's talk about dreams, right? Because mm -hmm. I know, like, in my book, In Feeding the Soul, I talk about, like, that's my gift, like my gift of dreaming and seeing things um, that come to pass, right? Or messages that I receive. So do you remember... I guess, like, is there any one time in particular or of a dream that you know I've had that I tell you, like, babe, this is going to happen? Not one in particular. Mm -hmm. Because we... <laughs> so Tab has been a person that has nearly every day of our relationship... I mean, that's no exaggeration. Yeah. Every day I hear about a dream. Every, I mean, every morning I hear about a dream in, in some form or fashion or a vision, um, whether it be good or bad. So, there, like, there's so many. Like, and, it, and as it pertains to your vision boards, houses, it can be something as, as simple as 
or, or as major as a house. Um, and without letting y'all in on too much of what our house looked like, Tab pretty much described this house years ago. Um, when I would be oftentimes concerned and complaining that, look, man, I want our family. I, I, my focus is on us getting a house. Cars. Um, becoming homeowners. Yeah, and becoming homeowners. And yeah. Um, where it could be, it, it could be a little irritating at times. I would be trying to go out and find, you know, my, my goal would always be, I got to find us a place where we can call home under any circumstances, whether that be renting or buying. Yeah. And Tab would be like, no, God has already shown me we're going to have this house. This is the house that we're going to have. God, I woke up today and I saw this house, babe, with this big room with these vaulted ceilings. And we are currently shooting right now in that room that she described. <laughs> um, we ain't even talked about that. Like, <laughs> Listen, this is the thing with me. When I dream stuff, I either write it down or I tell somebody so that I can release it. Right? Like... Then when it happens, I'm like, oh, man, it, this is it. But I don't, it's not like something that I uh, let consume me because they happen so often for me. I'll dream something or I'll see something. It, like you said, it's every day of my life. Every day. This has been my whole life. Like when you have a gift, it doesn't just come and go. It's very present. You know what I'm saying? I can't always control it. But it's very much so present every day when it comes to like dreaming and seeing. So... But yeah, the the house. Even me and Joyce kind of co-dreamed this house, cause we can't remember we had like we had a very similar dream on the same day. We both woke up like, let me tell you about my dream type of thing. So the only difference is, remember she said Ludacris was in the dream and they was playing baseball in the in the backyard. Hey. It, she was like, but I was calling him Uncle Chris. I was like. Well, I don't know if, if Ludacris is going to become our friend. But. Right, what I have learned to do, because in the beginning, it was difficult for me. It was difficult for me it was difficult, it was scary. Mm -hmm. Right? But And I don't like to say non-believer. I don't like to say I didn't believe it. It's scary to think even when you see it come to pass, you, your brain will tell you, or your fear will tell you, that's a coincidence, <laughs> you know, because <clears throat> I know with me personally, because of some of the things, some of the nightmares that I had, <laughs> I started to think, well, if those dreams come true, then do, my, do nightmares come true as well? Mm -hmm. um, and then when I had that experience, <clears throat> Go ahead and tell them about your experience, babe, so they know. I had I had a I had a dream. I woke up. I told Tab about the dream. The dream was very scary. Um, I had a dream at a time to where I couldn't afford to lose my job. <clears throat> I told Tab in my dream I lost my job. Wait, we wait found you got to set it up though. He woke up completely <clears throat> emotional, like crying, and you didn't want to tell me. Yeah, because it felt so real. Because it felt way too real, babe. And I was yeah. like, and it was at a time to where I could not. I, we could, it I, couldn't be it real. Can, this can't be real. Yeah. Um, but so go ahead. You 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 dreamt that you went to work and lost your job. Went to work, lost my job. Car broke broke down, and uh, we found out that Tab was pregnant. Is and it? I and I shared it with her that day. Um, that morning. That morning. And look, it's not one of those things where it's like, hey, <clears throat> you, you kind of knew, I kind of knew that, hey, it, it was a possibility that I could lose my job. Nah, it, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, I mean, I was in good standing until that point. Went to work, got called in the office, got walked up out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On my way home, frustrated, radiator went out. What is that smell? Smoke coming from the car? I never forget mm -hmm. it. I was on battleground. Car broke down. Greensboro days. Greensboro days. I'm on battleground in front of the Lowe's right by Pisca Church. <laughs> I, I know exactly where I was. Yep. And then I can't remember if it was the same day or yep. shortly after. It was the same day. That we, that Tab, because I think that sparked the interest when we was like, hey, and I think she took the test 
and found out, yeah, we got a baby coming. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to believe that the, so, the pregnancy test was real, though, because yeah. I was like, nah, because remember, I'm going to get the birth control pills because I had to did a 30 day yeah. cleanse, as they said. They was getting my body uh, ready for a new birth control pill because I was having some yeah. headaches. Oh, and so I was going to the doctor, the remember, the child. next day, Sick. and I was like, oh, this can't be real. It's probably like a false positive because. The birth control. I'm about to get the new birth control. Yeah, well, you like, were switching. You were switching. Yeah. I do remember that. Went in for the new birth control. They was like, no, you, you probably said no, because me and my mom supposed to come and get the new birth control. Yeah, I'm coming to get the new control. ones. Yeah, I, we I'm, just starting over. Yeah, we, yeah, we, not, we ain't quitting. We just starting over. It's like, no, you, you, you pregnant. But literally, all the things that he dreamt happened. Yeah, so it was scary for it was scary for me to think, you know, and, you know, that, that shook me up because it was no joke. It happened. The dream felt so real, and the way that it happened, um, and in the conditions, our, our conditions of our life in which it happened. Even with that being said, as the years went on and Tab would have the visions, <clears throat> and things would come to pass, I still in my head would but like, ah, that's just coincidence. Hey, ah, that's you know, I would I would blame it on stress. I would, <laughs> I will find a reason not to buy in. Um, and then, you know, going back to what Chor said, but now, you know, with all the stuff that's happening now and coming to pass, see, I don't, I don't, and, and, and knowing what your mom said mm -hmm. about you winning a Grammy. <laughs> Yeah. Right, your mom I like, said. Mama, I, I don't sing. But I honestly, <laughs> I, like, I you don't, know what I we mean. laughed at the idea when she said that. Mm -hmm. um, my mother-in-law, before she passed away, she would do the same thing. She, um, she, I, I remember she told me, and this scared me too. She told me that um, ministry was in my future, and <laughs> I had my idea of what that was, and I, I completely was like, Nah, mom. <laughs> Listen, nah, that ain't in me. You, you know. Um, That's because you know when you grow up in the south, you have an idea. You have of what an it idea is. of this thought that ministry is only in a church or in a pulpit. Yeah, but ministry is how you live your life, right? Yeah. What your, is your life, yeah. your life can be your ministry, and that's something that I I learned in the last four to five years with all of the changes that's been going on, and so I don't take any of the stuff that I heard back then, or even what Choice dreamed. Mm -hmm. You know. I've learned now to not laugh at it. I can find humor in it, but I don't disregard it. Um, because it could happen. <laughs> it, it may not happen at the time. Right. right. It may not happen at the time, or it may not happen in the fashion that the dream um, showed you. Yeah. However, I have learned with experiencing you, experiencing my own uh, dreams, your mom, that don't laugh at it. Don't <laughs> laugh because mama might have got it wrong in which type of award because Grammy sounds a whole lot like Emmy. Emmy right. You understand? And where we from, a lot of people don't know the difference. And she might have seen or heard in her vision me. Right, <laughs> Something right. at the end of it and she just, you know, went with the closest one that she can think of. Or... Um, <clears throat> I might win a Grammy one day. <laughs> Me, 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 me. I ain't gonna Ooh, laugh yeah. at it. I ain't gonna laugh at it because it might happen. It might happen. Listen. But, hey. The Fridays with Tab and Chance might get a Grammy. Maybe we need to make a whole song. She just said, well, I think, but she just I, I said, you was said, gonna win a Grammy. Yeah, I think she said you. Right. So you 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 just admitted now that you wouldn't be capable of winning the Grammy on Fridays with Tab and Chance. I'm the person who really got the vocals on there. Okay, right, so see, anyway. Now, no, hold oh. up, hold up. Let me tell you how I look at this. Let me get you a little sleep out your eyes right you, there, baby. Let me tell you how I look at this. When you win, uh -huh. guess who win? <laughs> we win. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, but really quick. So I, I posted this the other day, but I wanted to just show it to y'all. Um, when it comes to manifesting, right? We talk about dreams and sometimes you can write about those dreams and, you know, pray on them and meditate on them so that you can manifest that thing and work towards it. So in 2020, I was invited to be a presenter at the Emmys. And this was my rehearsal envelope that they gave me 
um, because you got to, you know, learn how to do this and, and pull it open. Like there's a whole thing that they want to make sure that you do it the right way. And so I was like, oh, OK, I'm like, going to keep this, you know, so that I can like visualize and manifest that one day I'm going to have an Emmy. And so, and I mean, everybody want to hear and the Emmy goes to or the Oscar goes to, you know, all those different things. And so I was like, oh, so the other day God was like, go, go, go look at that. Cause I kept it in my office in a little thing. So he was like, pull it out. Cause I wouldn't even open it. I just keep it like this. And so when I pulled it out, I was like, oh my Lord, I didn't even remember that my uh, award category was children's lifestyle and animation. I didn't even remember that that was what I presented on, right? This was before I had a children's show. This was before I, um, you know, knew that tab time was even going to be a thing, right? But it's so crazy how God will literally like order your steps and give you a preview without you realizing. But the thing that he brought to my attention was the word test because this was for rehearsal. So this was just a tester. But he was like, the, the test was, was for you. He was like, I, I put you to the test to see how you would handle this blessing, right? Because sometimes we don't realize the test is preparation. So then he said, test stood for trusting every season's test. If we trust him, we can trust every season's test because we've been through some seasons since 2020. And I feel like I have passed every test that he has, you know, put towards me or, you know, put me on. But I just thought that was amazing that this is now my category. Like I'm nominated for an Emmy and my show is nominated for an Emmy. So two Emmys in, you know, preschool children's programming. So I just thought that was amazing. Not even realize. So sometimes you'll be manifesting something because I wasn't manifesting it for my children's show. I was just look at this and be like, I want to win an Emmy one day. I want to be nominated for an Emmy one day. I want to hear that and the Emmy goes to like, and I would just look at this and I would look at this, but I, I didn't even open this since that day. And so that's another way that we manifest. And sometimes we got to be very specific, right? I uh, shared with y'all about vision boards. I remember in what year? I, it had to be what, 2008? Because we bought the house in Palmdale in 2009, right? Yeah. So like 2008, I might have my year off a little bit, but 2008, I did a vision board. Because that's around the time The Secret was very popular. The Secret. The Secret. Remember, that's my first time doing a, like, a real vision board. And I had a big house on there. You and Braley. Me and Braley. Me and Braley. I had a big house on there. I had a new Mercedes on there. <laughs> I had a new diamond ring on there. I put my headshot. I took my actress headshot and I wrote working actress uh, all of like 2009 or 2008, whichever the year was. Had that on there, pinned it. And probably had, you know, some other things. And probably had an Emmy on there, Austin, because I always just did that consistently every year. And that year, the, the 2009, we bought a house, a big mm-hmm. house in Palmdale, California. I got, Ooh. right, right. I ended up getting a Mercedes um, and I got a new ring. <laughs> I, like, I got everything that was on this board. Now, what I didn't do is I wasn't specific with what I had put on the board other than the acting thing. I was specific with that because I put the whole year of 2008, right, 2009, whatever that year was. I remember I worked all year. Like, oh, I was like, man, I was I was booking gigs left and right, you know. And then all of a sudden everything went quiet. The next year, like, I won't get no no jobs. And God was like, well, you said you you put that year on there. You didn't say nothing about the future. You said that year. So you worked that year. I was like, oh, Lord, the house that we got. I didn't say where we wanted the house. I just said I want a big house. We were in Palmdale. and We were miserable. Like nobody would come see us. You know, we was putting about 40,000 miles a, a year on our car because we had to come back to L.A. for work. Uh, then the car got a Mercedes. It was constantly in the shop and we could not afford to keep up the maintenance on the car. So God said, you asked for these things, but you didn't ask to be able to take care of them. You didn't ask to be able to uh, afford them but also keep them. Mm -hmm. But you also didn't ask for location wise, like for the house. You didn't ask for a place that will create happiness. Like we always talk about it. 
Had we stayed in Palmdale, we probably would have divorced. Mm-hmm. We won't. We wouldn't have made it. We literally were there for one year. We was like, we stay here. We ain't gonna make it. We ain't gonna make it. We were that unhappy there, and both of us were trying to act like we were happy there for each other. And thank God, one day he came up to the bedroom. He said, "Listen, what you think about moving back to LA, but but to the Valley?" I said, "When you want to go tomorrow." <laughs> I was waiting, like, Lord, please give me a sign, Jesus, that this is not the place for us. And that's how we ended up, you know, back here in L.A. But sometimes we'll do things, whether it's a journal, whether it's a vision board, we got to be specific. We have to be specific in what we ask God for. You know, sometimes he'll show us things in our dreams. And so when he shows them to us, Honey, sometimes we need to write them down and then take our time to meditate on it, pray on it, ask God to make it very clear for us, but then be specific in our prayers on it. So, you know, I feel obligated to talk about this as it pertains to manifesting and um, being specific. When Tab was going through, because a lot of people, you know, have have asked me about believing or made comment about me believing in you, right? <clears throat> believing in your visions, or did I have chance? Did you ever think that this would would happen? Um, <clears throat> and this is for the spouses who may have a person, you know, might be married to a believer and a person who met who believes in manifesting and vision boards and things of that nature. I want to say. I was of the thinking, right, I was of the thinking that, okay, I've, I've always found it attractive that Tab was a believer, right? So I never wanted to smother her, her dreams or, you know, stomp them out. I didn't want to be, you know, the person that says, hey, that's not going to happen or whatnot. Um, but I was afraid to indulge, to kind of like go with her. In the, I would go with her physically anywhere, right? My wife tell me the vision gave her, you know, somebody gave her a vision that we need to go across the country one more time. Let's go try it again. I'm hopping in a car and we're going. That's my wife, right? But in the thinking, and, I, and even in doing it in the physical, I would find a way to not, not go where she is mentally, I would find an excuse and be like, well, you know what? I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta go there with her mentally, but physically, you know what, it'd be a good opportunity for me. I'll find a good reason to go outside of what she's telling me because it was fearful because I could not, for, uh, even though I had experienced it, I, the experience that I had, I did not like. So it scared me. Um, and I, it, in, in the career that I had, Taken, I thought it would be dangerous for me to indulge and believe that all of these great things were coming um, because then I could think I could let my guard down and in the career path, which was law enforcement that I was in, it could be dangerous. And then I would kind of minimize it and be like, you know, when I started to see things come to pass and I'm like, hey, it was a moment where I, where I kind of realized when we was at Needle Street, <clears throat> where you was like, babe, come out here. She kind of encouraged me because I was, I had gotten to a, a point, a very low point to where I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, I was like, man, and I was beating myself up real bad. Like, man, babe, I, I set us back. I didn't, I got to do more. I got to figure out a way to help us. And we went, I remember we went in, you know, out in the back. We sat down and we... She Why was she like, bring that notebook? she was like, let's write it all down. Let's write it all down. And I kind of know my wife was like, she, Is that don't, the she don't understand. No, nah, that's, a, that new, that's a new one. I started. Oh, that's a new one. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was like, but I I'm going to go get it. But I'm going to go along with her. Um, I'm going to go out here because even with. With me, I'm a, it's, it's going to make me feel better to go sit down and talk to my wife. So I'm, I'll indulge. And what I realized was, <clears throat> and, and I took on, I said, you know what, this, this, it'll be good for me to just write down my task. We just write down, it's, it's not a vision board. I'm just writing down my task, my goals. It's not a vision board, right? In my head, I'm not, I'm not going to indulge in the whole vision board thing. And it, 
man, I, I, I'm a, is, but a successful man and a thoughtful man, a good father, a good husband, and a good son, I need to write down my task and check off my task. <clears throat> In doing that, now whether you call it a task, a list of tasks, or a vision board, I can honestly tell you that the things that I wrote on my vision board or my task list, mm -hmm. probably 75% of those things came to pass. If uh, not all. If not all of them. He can't right. find his book. I got mine. Yours is, we're going to find it. It's somewhere in here. And I think, there, so, so the only reason I say, that I say I'm not saying 100% is because of um, a couple of things that I was asking for on the list were uh, in relation to a career that I'm no longer in. So I was, at, I was hoping to promote or um, advance in my career. And I remember Tab telling me, you're not gonna be there. So that <laughs> one won't come to pass. <laughs> so yeah. you're like, you, you're not gonna I be like, there. I was like, you can go on and scratch that one off. You on know. her list, she put, I'm going to, I, I'm going to retire my husband. Um, and I just would kind of like smile at the idea and think, man, I'm just thankful that my wife thinks of me in that way and wants to protect me. Um, but as most of you know, she retired me. <laughs> she did, so the other the stuff that was on the list didn't come to pass. But I think everything outside of the list, I and mean, I hope to find it, came to pass. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one thing particularly you wrote on there that you wanted to create a legacy for your children. Yes. Like that was the thing, you were like, I just wanna be remembered in a good way. Like I wanna leave something behind that they know this was their father. Right. Yeah. It was like a legacy for your for your kids. And so I think even with doing Team Chance basketball mm -hmm. and how you pour into children every day, like you're building an amazing legacy. Yeah. You know, now. And of course as a family also, we're doing the same. I also put on the list that I wanted to be available. Um I wanted to be available for my son and for my family and to be able to do things for my mom. I remember Yeah. You know, I had I was carrying a whole lot of uh, weight of uh, failure. You know, like I didn't do enough in everything. Um, I'm constant in my son's life. Yeah. Um, my mom is good. <laughs> She's yeah. good. Um, my girls are good. You good. You know. Um, but let's talk about one thing real quick before we close is the, the sense of failure. Um, it, it comes to a lot of people based on age, uh, based on where they are in their life. Mm -hmm. And so I want to always be clear with people. You don't have to get a certain amount of things done at a certain age. Like a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm 30. And that can create conflict when, you, when yes. you're manifesting. Right. Yeah. Because what happens is if you feel like you didn't accomplish it by this day, you forget how to dream. Mm -hmm. You don't believe that there's another way for it to come. Right. So sometimes we'll, we will be so hard on ourselves. And I watched my husband be extremely hard on himself because we had not accomplished or he didn't feel like he was providing enough for the family that he would just beat himself up, right? And make himself feel like he was a failure. And so I remember when we left the house in Palmdale, we owned that house, but we had to let it go. We sold it so we could move back you know, to LA to be happy, right? And we rented and we got kind of stuck in renting for about seven years and because we couldn't afford to buy again. And he hated it. It was like, I, I set us back. Like, that was the thing you used to say. Like, I yeah. said, you know, I set us back. And so my goal became, I'm going to make sure we buy us the house. Like, he bought the first house. I'm, I'm going to get us the second house. I'm going to make sure that we're going to be able to buy a house to take that off of his plate. And so I remember, and I, and I got I to gotta find the, uh, the, the notebook. It's upstairs. But my list was like, buy us a house next year in 2018, because we made this list in 2017. Mm -hmm. I ain't had no job. I was on disability for a whole year. My disability ran out, then I was on unemployment, that ran out. I had like, I think $386 in the bank. 
at this time. And my car payment was three sixty four. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was broke. I, yeah. you know, thank God my husband still had a career at that time and he was making money. He was supporting us. Uh, but I also had like my little side hustles that I would do before I started driving Uber. But on this list, we said we're going to believe in the supernatural. These are the things we're going to write down what God can do. Not what we can do, but what God can do. Like with no money in the bank, I'm, yeah. I'm going to say we will buy a house next year. I remember you kept, <laughs> hey, look, I was putting stuff on the list. And she would be like, that's what you can do. <laughs> I want you to pit on here what you want God to do. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And I would get frustrated and be like, and you got to know, and so there's a level too. You Doing this is challenging mm -hmm. to where if you are good, if you've been raised on work ethic and a good person, I think it, it can be challenging for you because you start to, you, you, it's not that you're not a believer. You just a good. You just a person that's done worked. You ain't. A, you ain't. You know. So I'm, my list was challenging for me, and I'm like, nah. Yeah. So I remember us having a conversation about working while you wait, mm -hmm. which was super important to me because I'm looking at this list, and every time Tab said that, after I would get over my frustration, I'd be like, all right. Because she's forcing. It's kind of like saying, I'm gonna force you to believe and dream in something bigger than yourself, mm -hmm. which is like scary for a person who has felt like <clears throat> they're behind and that's what she's getting at, or they failed at something. That's scary, that's vulnerability. That's where you're saying, I can't go into an uncertain place when I'm already behind. I have to be able to control these things because I'm already trying to cover ground that I've lost. Mm -hmm. um, that also comes from <clears throat> thinking that you're the only one you're in control. You're the only one in control. Yeah. Which is a That's big... That's going to help somebody. Yeah. Which is a big thing on your faith <clears throat> and believing. Yeah. If you don't have faith, if you don't believe that something bigger than you is in control, which for, for years I thought I could control my career, like with, with my acting and so I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it this way. And I was not doing well, Right. You know, I would have a lot of small victories, but it wasn't until I said, God, you you take full control of my life, of me. That's when things started to change for me. You know what I'm saying? So it was always important, mm -hmm. you know, for me to encourage that. I've always been a big dreamer, big believer in my dreams. Uh, and I also never understood how anybody else could not be. Right. Like, Absolutely. So, cause that, and, but the conflict there is me still thinking I'm a dream big. I see these things, but I got to be in control of getting it. Like he showed it to me. Now I got to be in control of getting it. I had to get to a place where I'm like, he showed it to me. Okay, God, what do you want me to do to get to it? That, that was the difference. That's a huge difference. It, it may seem minute, but if you see, if I dream something or I hear him speak clearly to me, and then I think, okay, let me take control of that and, and get it done. Instead of me waiting and saying, okay, God, how do you want me to do this? Seeking him first so that I can accomplish it. Like now, everything I do, I seek him first before I make a decision. It's a difference. Chance was very much so, I know what we need to survive. I know what I can do to get this. And I also kind of adapted that with him. Like, okay, let's 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 do it. You know it. what? I'm gonna say something. And I know somebody can relate to this. <laughs> I also was the uh, I in the mindset too, like, I'm trying to make sure that I say this the right way. Man, God out here helping everybody with bigger problems than what like, so I was I'm into thinking of like, man. What I can control, I'm going to do. Because one day, I'm going to, like, I always felt like this is not that bad. I did this. Let me fix this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm a believer in, in God. But I'm also looking at it like, I'm, if I'm one of his children, I want to be the one that he look at and say, when you ask for me so, for something because you never asked me for nothing, I'm going to give it to you <laughs> because you've been working your butt off. That's, that's honestly how I looked at it. It's like, man, okay, I did this. 
I don't need no help from God right now. I ain't gonna ask him for nothing. <laughs> but see, but that's, I'm gonna, that's but like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bust my butt and I'm gonna do it and then keep digging a hole. Keep digging a yeah. hole. And it's the same thing that I, when we first started dating, right, and how I looked at your dad, mm -hmm. I knew he was able to help us. I knew he was able to help us. I knew he was willing to help us. But I always wanted to keep that card in my back pocket. Yeah. I always want to keep that card in my back pocket and not have my hands out just because he can help me does not mean he should help me. Mm -hmm. That's what I can. That's what I related to is like I and I took that thinking through the entirety of our relationship and thinking, all right, I see you doing that. I see a lot of that stuff working, but. I'm going to wait. I'm going to save mine. <laughs> I'm going to save mine and I'm going to put my work in. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't working out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that it just wasn't working out. That way of thinking comes from fear. Yeah. Because what you're fearing is if I ask now, I ain't gonna be able I to ask later. Ask again. Exactly. exactly. But that's not the God exactly. we serve. Exactly. We can go to Him at any time, right? And there's not. And also, we can't tell God that He's too busy. That's us. We that's know, worldly ways. But that's a, but, that's the way. Yeah. That's the way we was. That's the way at least I was raised, and what was implied. It's like, look, when you come to ask me, mm -hmm. really need help. But, I, but it's so far from the truth. I know. You know, however, I will say this. I don't know. God ain't tell me, but I can only imagine he get tired of people asking for things and not doing their part. Right. I know he'd be like, man, I'm going to do my part, but are you doing yours? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I do believe that he honors our doing, like he honors the work we do as well. So if you do your part, he definitely gonna do his. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think he ever um, grows tired of us and I don't think he'll ever reject us. And sometimes not doing anything is him helping us, right? So sometimes you're in a bind and you praying, praying, praying and you're like, man, he ain't answering my prayers. Sometimes that is the answer. Because he's needing you to continue to seek him. He's trying to build your relationship. And he's also testing you. Okay? He's testing us. Trust every season's test to see if we can handle the blessing that he's going to give us. I believe that. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Just like I believe this weekend's going to be very good at the Emmys. <laughs> I ain't going to listen. It, and it's funny that you say that because I've been very hesitant to say uh, when I win, right? Like the humility of me is like, I want to be, I'm so grateful to just be nominated. But God is also like, but didn't I tell you you was going to win the Emmy? I don't know if it's this one. But he was like, but didn't you dream that y'all won an Emmy for tab time? I'm like, I did. But that little bit of, it's like a little bit of fear of like, I still want to be humble about the situation. It was like, you are. But at the same time, I still need you to claim what I have, have spoken over your life and what I've put into your heart and in your mind. So uh, I'm going to go on and claim it for the weekend. You won already. <laughs> I, I do feel like I've won already, though. That the is fact the that thing. We, the fact that we get to be in a room. Yeah. Knowing this story, yeah. this story. Yeah. That is the win to we me. We won. And maybe that's the that, win. I feel like, hey, we won. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I hope that y'all got something from this episode. Um, it's I know we, we kind of took y'all on a little bit of a journey everywhere from manifesting to dreams to visions to believing to journaling to whatever the case may be. Um, the hope is that you believe that you believe, right, in your dreams, that you don't give up, that you still um, seek him in everything that you do, but do not fear, all right? Uh, with that being said, honey, listen, y'all say a little prayer for Tab, okay, <laughs> <laughs> this weekend. Tune in. Uh, I think it's Emmys.tv or something like that, but I'll put it in the description of this video where you can uh, stream and watch it this weekend on Sunday. And, uh, yeah, anything else, babe? That's I'm, it. And we're going to be cute. Clean. Down, as Choice would say, down, okay? <laughs> y'all going on about y'all business and have the most amazing day. 
But even if you can't have a good one, don't you dare go messing up nobody else's here. We love y'all. God bless y'all. Thank y'all.